Do you have money to invest and want to stay in Australia? We know how to help. You can buy an established business, you create your own business, or invest in an Australian project. We know investing is a serious business, and we have serious projects for you to invest in, which will assist you to achieve your goal. We know how to create business plans that present the strongest cases to impress the Australian authorities. I'll be walking you through the key aspects connected with buying a business in Australia and also discussing how we can match your specific circumstances to a business opportunity. We know about Australian taxation, business structures, assets protections, insurance and licenses and all regarding how to run a business in Australia. We are focused on the values, the skills, the quality and the mindset that help you to project your successful journey as an entrepreneur in Australia. We're an alliance built for genuine investors. With our decades of combined experience, we guarantee to make a custom-made investment solution to serve your particular immigration needs. Join our webinar today so you can learn more about how to invest and stay in Australia. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our webinar, Investment Migration, Australia Invest and Stay. I'm grateful to be here with this fantastic team of professionals. In a post-COVID-19 war economy, Australia is driving back to its economy stability. We offer you the chance to live the life you want in Australia, where business means growth, innovation, security, especially in this time of crisis. Investing in Australia economy to gain a permanent residency is an effective route for entrepreneurs who want to grow and innovate, gain access to new markets and build a better future with security, flexibility and prosperity. We welcome our speakers tonight. In Melbourne, Juan Guillermo Rincón, co-founder of RC Australia Migration and registered immigration agent. In Sydney, Paul Reftry, CEO of Projects RH. Dr. Hammer, CVP from the Business Plan Company. Richard Carter, Business Sales Specialist from Link Business. In Adelaide, Jaritza Salazar, Director of Y&S Accounting. Javier Guillén, Business Development Manager from Insign Academy. And in Brisbane, Graham Kinder, CEO of River Gold Capital. Let's begin. Enjoy this great opportunity to discuss business and life opportunities. We start our webinar with Juan Guillermo Rincón, who will talk about investment visa options and their requirements. Hi, good evening, Paul and Juan Guillermo. Hi, uh, hi everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, well, my it's my my honor to start the meeting. Uh, so I will talk about basically about the many options we have as a, for entrepreneurs and for investors to gain residency in Australia. First of all, well, I'd like to introduce ourselves. We are a migration agency registered for the Australian government, uh, meaning that we must follow a very strict uh, code of conduct. Um, we also can offer to our clients more than 12 years experience. Um, we are the largest uh, immigration agency in, in South America for Australia. Um, we, as a lawyers, we are very conservative. We only take cases that we truly believe we can succeed. We have more than 
thousands and thousands of visas approved. And of course, the um, commitment with success is total. Well, get into the visas. I make out some research and I found that is 12 different kind of visas for entrepreneurs and investors. And I group these 12 visas in four categories. The first one is investment visas, uh, which um, basically allowed the, the investor to come here and put a business. The second group is what I would call that in between invested commas, uh, self-sponsored visas, meaning people who already have a an, an company can use the company to gain permanent residency. Third is the group of visas uh, that you buy a small business, you can gain permanent residency. And the last and all is some authorities or the visas that for um, high tech entrepreneurs into a state. But let me um, go to the first group that I think is the more interesting of all. These are the investment and business visas. Within this group, I make basically three categories. The first one is for business owner. Uh, the business owner visa is uh, for people who already have a business, and the business could the business could be either overseas or in Australia. And if the business gets some turnover of to ha of half a million dollars, and the owner of the business have a net asset of a hundred dollars, a hundred thousand dollars, they can get permanent residency. The, pardon, sorry, uh, temporary residency. This is an equivalent one going to the permanent residency with a higher uh, request. But this is visas are for business people who already have a business. There is another group which is very interesting, which is the venture capital uh, visas, which are also for permanent residency and for temporary residency. Here, the point I like to stress, and my colleagues we will uh, explain, is through capital funding to buy in business, to make business plans. This is an excellent option for people who like to invest in Australia through business. We also, in this case, we have, for instance, the 188 visa, which requires just $200,000 for investment. And this $200,000 will be split into three partners. So if you have $70,000 and have two partners, you can accept this visa. The third and last category within this investment business visas is the pure investor, which is just having the money, which will be 1.5 million up to 15 million to invest and gain the visa. Oh, um, well, because of the time is so limited, uh, I, I like to go for the second category, which is the category of the sponsor visas. The sponsor visas are for um, business who already are in Australia or, and this is the point I like to stress, will be overseas business. And the overseas business or the Australian business can sponsor his owners to get a temporary visa or a permanent with pathway to the permanent visa. Um, this is very, 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 very common visa here in Australia. It's an excellent option even for people who has already companies overseas. And this is a very good step to start making interest in Australia. And lastly, I like just to mention the small business visas because the small business visas are just are in two states, one in Tasmania or for a small business, and the other one in Queensland for people who like to buy an existing business. Later on, we will talk about buying business in Australia, buying an existing business. I will know that we, as a team, we can assist you 
very successfully in this regard. Any question, please feel free to, to, to put the question. We are more than happy to see you in every step of the process. Thank you, Nicholas, and thank you, Juan. Um, that was a great introduction. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. At Project RH, our core business is to link good projects with money. What we do is financial communications. Our role in investment visas is to manage the commercial aspects of what you need to do to make your visa application successful. We are a multidisciplinary practice with a wide ecosystem of skills mix. Many of the people we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis will speak today. Our process is we receive a recommendation from RC Australia with the visa you need and the location you wish to go to. We then support you in making your application to the state or territory. We don't make it for you, it is made by one but we prepare the backing paperwork. We generally work also with Dr. Warren Harmer at the business planning company to prepare your business plan to meet the specific needs of the state or territory government you wish to apply to. Towards the end of our engagement, we work with Graham Kinder of River Gold Capital to ensure that you get the venture capital uh, fund support you need if you need it. If you could turn to the next slide, please, Nicholas. As Juan has very eloquently presented, there are a number of investment style visas. The ones that we see the most are the 188 series and the 132B series. Truthfully, I have never seen a 188D, but they are there. We work regularly with people who are on this pathway and generally the clients we work with need venture capital fund support, hence our regular engagement with Graham Kinder of River Gold Capital. Next slide, please. In supporting your process, we need to do work together. Our role is we prepare the information memorandum, which is your story. We prepare also a financial model, which shows that the numbers work. We then engage with the state or territory to ensure that what you're wanting to do fits in with what they want done. Part of that story is we engage with Dr. Warren Harmer to get the suitable um, business plan, which ticks the hot spots. We then prepare a presentation, which in the industry is called a pitch deck. And we also prepare a one page summary. But we always remember it's your project. And you may you are getting an investor to work with you. Next slide, please. We also see individuals who simply wish to invest, as Juan pointed out. We receive that recommendation and we work with them to ensure that they have an appropriate portfolio, which will match the requirements of government. There are, as Juan pointed out, many visas. What we do is work with you to ensure that the commercial requirements are met. Thank you, Nicholas. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much, Paul. Then please t tell me a bit, what is this process? Uh, we received a few questions about what, how to start. Do we need to start with Project RH? Do I need to start with a business? Or, or what do I need to start Generally, this project? Th thank you, Nicholas, for the question. Generally, you start with RC Australia, and they say, this is the business process you want. Yes, you fit and meet the other criteria. I suggest you go and talk to Projects RH. We discuss with you the business model, how much money you're going to need to complete the process. Um, yes. 
if there's a million dollar requirement, for example, under some visas, that we ensure that, that we can raise that money with the assistance of Graham. So it's an interactive process. Early on, we would call people like Graham and Warren Harmer and Richard Carter, for example, to say, how much is a business in Tasmania? Um, uh, this is what the client wants to have. How much money do they need or how much money do we need to find for them? So it's a really important interactive process and we welcome questions at any time and please feel free to ring us on the number that's, I believe, at the end of the presentation. So well, thank you very much, yes. Nicholas, for the question. Oh, no, thank you so much, Paul. We welcome Richard Carter, business sales specialist at Link Business, will tell us how to buy a business in Australia. Good evening, Richard. Good evening. How are you? I'm doing really well. Really grateful to be here. Excellent. Right. You're never going to find a perfect business to invest in. Acquiring a business is about planning, persistence, and compromise. But if you have the right team behind you, it can be the key to an outstanding lifestyle, especially here in Australia. I'm Richard Carter. I'm a business broker, and I help people buy and sell businesses. I'm going to cover four key areas this evening. The first, a bit of background on business in Australia. The second, the type of business you may wish to consider buying. Thirdly, the process of buying a business. And finally, the professional support you'll need. Okay, let's talk about doing business in Australia. The good news is Australia is a technically advanced country with a great environment for conducting business activities. We have transparent laws, strongly independent judiciary, a highly educated and skilled population, and a rich cultural diversity. On the other side of the coin, there are a lot of rules to abide by. Now that's a good thing because it will protect yourself and protect you when you're running a business. But it, it, it's very wise to follow those rules. And we have some experts here who will help you down those lines. But all that said, don't let that put you off. Australia is a great place to run a business and to be involved in business. But why would you buy a business instead of starting one? Well, there's a few factors. A lot of the admin work will be done. Key investment will already be made in infrastructure. You may already have some great personnel in place in an existing business. And the basic concept should already be proven. And there will be existing cash flow to help fund your direction on where you want to take the business. Right, let's talk about some of the uh, categories of business you might want to consider. And there are plenty of opportunities in Australia. Technology, Australia has a very strong history in technology, but it's somewhat unheralded. We also have a powerful startup ecosystem. Could you thrive in innovation, fintech, or artificial intelligence? Manufacturing has declined dramatically over the past few decades, but there are still opportunities and some thought of reintroducing manufacturing capabilities after the COVID um, scenario. Many e-commerce businesses in Australia have grown significantly over the past few months. Is there something you can offer in this area? What about import, export or wholesale sectors? Could your overseas contacts be leveraged? Healthcare is very much in the spotlight. Plenty of opportunities in that area. Hospitality is under pressure at the moment. Restaurants, cafes and bars aren't doing the business they were. But could you offer a new approach? And there are a raft of service industries where you could thrive, from deliveries, cleaning, educating, training. Some people will be making very astute and profitable business purchases during the current period. You could be one of them. Now, how do you buy a business? How do you go, buy, go about doing this in Australia? The first thing and most important to do is consider your own personal position. What are your objectives? What skills can you contribute? How can you improve the business? Where should it be located? And how much money 
can you commit to the business? And then you can start looking. There are plenty of business for sale websites out there, but also build relationships with business brokers. They're the experts in the process. They'll be able to help you evaluate suitable purchases and may be aware of opportunities that are not in the public domain. Once you find a business you're interested in, you need to assess that business, hold discussions with the owner, establish a firm understanding of that operation, and then put in an offer, put in an offer to buy the business. It gets accepted, congratulations. But you've still got to finish the job. Draw up an outline agreement in conjunction with the owner and your business broker. Define key matters in that agreement, include price, the business assets, intellectual property, personnel considerations, etc., etc. That then goes to a solicitor who actually draws up a formal sale of business contract. But all overlying those final stages as well as what we call due diligence, you need to make sure what you're buying really exists and really is what it says it is. And finally, settlement. Money changes hands and you become the legal owner of the business. That's your objective. I'll just quickly recap on the kind of support you'll need because having a team to do this process is essential. You'll need an accountant, budgeting, interpreting accounts, tax planning, due diligence. You'll need that accounting expertise. You'll need a solicitor to make sure you have a solid sale of business contract and avoid future disputes. You'll need an immigration professional to make sure it matches your Australian immigration objectives. And depending on your circumstances, you'll also need some of the other experts you'll be hearing from tonight. Finally, you'll need a business broker. Why? Because a good broker will have the people skills, teamwork, negotiation, and presentation skills, plus access to resources to really make things happen for you. I work for Link, the world's largest business brokerage. That gives me access to an unmatched range of resources and experience. Thank you for listening. If you'd like more in-depth information, or if you'd like to see what businesses are available in the market right now, please get in touch. And whatever happens, connect with me on LinkedIn. Just search for Richard Carter and I'll be top of the search results. Thank you. Thank you so much, Richard. And I told you, as a case manager, we receive many questions about the business process. This is why Dr. Hammer, CVP from the Business Plan Company, will tell us how to create a business proposal for Australian migration. Thank you so much. Uh, nice to meet you all and thanks for having me on. Um, in this short time, what I'd like to do is just to give you a short summary of things to look out for when you're getting your business plan and business proposal ready. Um, obviously, this is really where the, the, the rubber hits the road and your proposal is going to go in with your submission for application. And so there's some things that you need to look, look out for. So what I see a lot with applicants that come along is they have an idea of what could work or maybe what they want to do, but they don't always see the application process from the other side. And as we're putting together proposals all the time, we obviously are, we are trying to give the greatest strength to your application because there's no guarantees that your application is going to get be successful. So I just want to convey to you some of the things that we look for when we are uh, putting your proposal together. Australia is a big country and all of you that are living here at the moment will know that. Um, and what that means is that each of the state governments who might be assessing your uh, your application they have different priorities. There's different economies. They have different objectives for the state government. You have different types of businesses that work in different locations. So your idea of what kind of business you'd like to propose may not always fit with the state that you're going to um, be applying for. So what we're really looking for in the uh, proposals that we put together is to keep it as realistic as possible. Um, and it needs to fit with that economy of the state government, the priorities of the state government, but also with your particular preferences and also your past experience. So it's a bit of a juggling act to get all of those things working all together to create something that's compelling. So what kind of business should you propose? 
Um, we get a variety of clients that come along and some of them, they know what they want to do and other, others that they don't. In many cases, they're looking to extend the, a type of business that, or that they've worked in before or um, a business that they're still operating overseas and they want to bring it to Australia or do the same thing in Australia. Sometimes that can be con turned into a compelling proposal. Sometimes it, it can't. And so we really try to match those things up. So really thinking from the other side, so if a state government is going to assess your particular uh, business, looking at it from their side, it's really all about the benefits to the state. That's what they're looking for. So it probably matters a little bit less about what you want from their side and it matters what's, what they want. And so it does need to be aligned with the state economy. It needs to be realistic. Uh, your current business, may uh, they may not fit. And I'll give you an example of uh, clients that we've worked with who had clothing manufacturing and they wanted to come and import their products into Australia. State governments don't like that. So that's obviously not a type of business that they want to continue on in their Australian operations. And we need to be careful that we're pre presenting something that's attractive to the state government. So remember, it's about them. It's not about you when they're making that assessment of do they want to give you the uh, approval. So how do you show the benefit to the state? Um, and again, looking at it from the state's point of view, what is it that they want to get out of the sponsoring you to come along to the state? They want investment, that goes, goes with every visa that you're going to apply for. They want jobs, they want local jobs. If there's potential that you can show exports, that's always very well received. Um, if there's increased connection to international markets, that's also very well received. If you're looking at um, increasing the skills and training of local employees, if you're probably bringing in new products, um, if you're replacing a product that is currently imported, that's, uh, that's viewed very favorably. Manufacturing is not an easy business to propose to set up in Australia, but state governments definitely like that. Um, technological advancement and an alignment with the state priorities. And now if you, as you're doing your research, you'll probably find that most state governments have a published strategy for the economy of the state and they tend to list different things they're, that they're interested in and that could be tourism for some states it could be agriculture for some technology education um, and there's a range of them there and so part of the work that we do is knowing what each of the states want so we can best align your proposal with what it is that they're actually looking for And then we want to we we want to create a strong case. And so, as I mentioned before, there's no guarantees with these things. So what we're trying to do is to put all the steps in place, based on as much evidence as we can, that your your application is of true benefit to them, and then so they should want to sponsor you. So it needs to impress them. Uh, it needs to show good planning and that it's well researched. It shows needs to show significant economic impact. And some states actually specify for particular visas, numbers of jobs that they might want you to create or various other criteria. It needs to show that you understand the local economy. It needs to, it needs to be a genuine, realistic and viable proposition. Um, it needs to fit with your experience and doing things like visiting the location help a lot. So you may not realize that a hastily patched together business plan and business proposal is, is gonna look like that. And that, because they assess so many of these, then putting something together at the last minute without much thought is going to look that way. So we do our best to make your proposal as, as uh, impressive as we can. And what that means is rather than having statements of intent, we try to include as much evidence as we can so that you actually know what you're getting into and you've really thought about it and you've done your research locally. And obviously, obviously to make that uh, to make that process smoother and to make your uh, proposal more compelling there are things that you can do so so do be involved in the process if you can the best plans and proposals that we work on are the ones where the client is available to answer questions and provide information around themselves and their uh, previous businesses provide a good brief give us feedback and actually read the plans so that doesn't always happen assign some time so you can work with us um, if you, look, we do get people who come along and they just really want you to tick the box. And what that means is your application actually looks like you're just ticking the box. So as much as you can be involved in, I mean, we do all the work, but for it to be accurate and meaningful, then we need to provide real information about who you are as an applicant. 
and the things that things that reduce your chances so as i said the, the people doing the assessments of these they've seen a lot of them and the things that uh are going to stand out as a weak application um they're going to see it so we we don't want you to look like you're trying to buy a visa even though everybody wants to get the visa that's part of the process we want it to look like you're actually going to come and create a great business and they really want you to be there so the business type uh, if it doesn't have really much connection with you or it's completely different to what you're doing now, that's going to weaken your chances. Um, business proposals that have a low opportunity in Australia. Um, if you'd want to get into a business that has a high degree of compliance, like medical, or if you want to come in and be an accountant and it takes years to get the training, well, it's harder for them to think that you're actually going to do that. Uh, low economic, economic benefit to the state. Uh, lack of detail about the applicant. That's something that we get a bit where uh, the applicant is a bit shy about handing information over and we can present you as best we can uh, but if it's if it's a very short brief then that's obviously limited so we can't uh, show your best side uh, businesses that undermine local local businesses like uh, competing imports and if your if your application looks like you're buying a visa then they'll be able to see that so really participate in it, it we really do our best to put a great case together for you and if you do all that then that just maximizes your chances of being approved well, thank you so much. And no worries. we start, we have a, a session of Q&A. And I would like to start with you. A uh, few of our participants have been asking, uh, what are those mistakes uh, when, when you start a project? And what are those mistakes for a business plan? What are the mistakes? Um, yes. Yeah, look, if you're putting a business plan together for a brand new business, there's a lot that you don't know, but you can make it more compelling by including information about the applicant. Um, so someone who comes along and they've got an impressive business history, we really highlight those things in the plan. If they possibly have some connections in Australia, we have some clients that come along that have done some homework and have uh, presented communications that they've had with local suppliers or potential clients. All of these small things, the one presenters, they really make the make the proposal look more genuine. So it's it's about bridging that gap between painting a picture of something that doesn't exist with as much information that is genuine as possible. And these aren't hard things to do, but it's just about doing a little bit of homework and getting the right information from the applicant so we can present them as best we can. And when, when we have those, uh, when we have that idea, do we need to provide support with our accountant, our sub professional? What, what are the keys to present a business plan? The key, look, honestly, for, for a migration application, it's about creating a proposal that's realistic and looks genuine. So as I mentioned before, one of the things that happens not too infrequently is we have applicants come along who don't necessarily know what kind of business they want to get into. Maybe they don't know much about the Australian market. That's understandable. So typically what we would do for those applicants is that we might have a discussion with them before we even start the plan where they can just present some ideas and we can workshop a little bit before they actually start in terms of what kind of business they, they're intending to propose. And if, if someone comes along and, and they, you know, they have an idea for a business that I think is the, the state governments are probably not going to like, imports, for example, um, then we would workshop with them to see if we, we could come up with a way to create a proposal that uses their experience, uh, uses their skills, but maybe is a bit more palatable to a state government. Okay, great. That's so really just... getting the thinking right before you even start preparing, yes. getting your information together, spending a bit of time um, getting images of your current business, putting together a CV, those kinds of things. All those little things help to make the plan look more genuine and realistic. Okay, so thank you. There is uh, heaps of questions about founding, and people are quite discussing that we need so much money. And in, in, in terms of the business plan and in terms oh. of this and well, and plan that is here, uh, people are asking, do we need money? Well, we will talk about funding in a minute, oh. um, but especially 
for uh, Juan in RC Australia, people are asking if a, a startups works as a business. Now we know that we probably can make a business plan with Dr. Hammer, but a startup works as a business. I mean, we do we do a lot of them. It depends on the visa. Um, I mean, if someone's coming here to start a business, most of them are they are startups, but they obviously have skills and experience and capital that's coming from their existing business overseas. Um, so you know, m most of the, like the one eight eights and the one three twos that we work on, they're they're pretty much all startups. Not all of them, but most of them. Yes, uh, Nicholas. Uh, definitely, startups are. I think are the most sought after investment because startups is in the innovative aspect of the startup are the type of entrepreneurs Australia is looking for. So definitely uh, startups, new companies, new ideas, innovative ideas is exactly what Australia is looking for. Definitely, uh, established business is an option, but a startup uh, business is another option. Absolutely valid. We have another question. Uh, if I buy a small business in Queensland, may I develop another line of business or I have to continue with the same existing one? And, well, Paul Mai will help us a little bit further, but in terms of uh, the visa, uh, if I got this kind of business, can I just slightly change this to uh, meet the requirements that the department are asking for? Well, uh, it's his own business. If he'd like to expand, you have to change a little. If you'd like to de develop a new line of business, do it. It's no problem about that. The visa allows you to do any challenges you like because this visa um, is a very powerful platform to do business in Australia as well as to progress to the citizenship. In both cases, you are not tied to the initial line of business of the visa. If you like to buy a cafe and later on to develop another sort of business based in the business structure, you can. No problem at all. Um when we were talking about experience, that uh, as an entrepreneur, I need to provide experience, uh, but then perhaps I got a startup. This is just new. Uh, how can I prove my experience? Well, from the point of view of the Australian authorities, experience is most to be evidenced by letter of reference from suppliers, letter of reference of former clients, a chamber of commerce registration, the same incorporation of, of companies of previous in, in other states. There is a lot of evidence. This is a very wide uh, range of options we can, we can use to provide uh, evidence uh, about the experience of the applicant. Okay, great. Um, and well, uh, it's a great opportunity to welcome Deritza. Uh, I guess we've been talking that there is these visas that people can, entrepreneurs can, uh, can apply. And Dr. Uh, Warren, Paul, and Richard have been talking about ideas. We just Take these ideas, create a plan, but an accountant and especially the numbers are pretty important. I'm really happy to welcome Adirita Salazar, Director of YNS Accounting, who we've been talking uh, about this, the numbers, which sometimes is a little bit scary, sometimes a little bit tricky, but if we are organized, we can actually achieve and meet all the criteria. And at the end, we will have another Q&A session that will be cover every single company and every single person. Thank you, Juan, and thank you, Dr. Rahul. Thank, thank you. you. Yes, thank you, Nicolas. Thank you for the introduction. And yes, yeah, so for uh, all our attendees, uh, good night. And if you don't know me, my name is Jaritza Salazar. 
Um, I'm coming tonight from Wayanese Accounting. Uh, so I just want to introduce uh, ourselves uh, first of all. Uh, so we are an accounting practice. Uh, we have been in business for around 12 years. We are a CPA certified company. And then as a company, we as well has offices in Brisbane, in Melbourne, Sydney, and in Adelaide. Um, so yes, we, we offer many services, right? But how do we uh, how do we fit in this puzzle tonight, in this in this um, panel? So what we do is we will support you, depends uh, which way you decide to go. So you say, okay, I decide that I had the money and I'm going to buy a business. So we are the ones who are going to check the numbers of the business you're going to buy. You know, is your hard working money, so you have to make sure that it's invested properly. So what we do is if you go into the business, we do legitimacy, we're going to review the business assets, we're going to get the financial statements, make sure you know that everything is in the in the asset of the business, the business name. Uh, when you start a business, you're going to do some cash flow to start paying the expenses, you know, the, the, the person, the meeting that you had as soon as you start. Uh, very important the taxation obligations. So you buy a business, you have to ensure that the business you buy don't have any outstanding liabilities with the government. You want to make sure that the GC is paid, the pay as you go is paid, the superannuation is paid, and also all debts, all liabilities with other parties. So this is our job. This is what we do when you decide to buy a business. As well, we're going to pour you in the day to day of the business. You know, you maybe had employees, you had to have payroll, you had to contractors, so all the compliance the part with the government. If you decide to go the other way, and maybe you decide to start your own business, but you don't have the money, right? So you had to convince your investors that your idea is fantastic. And you have to show them the numbers. Um, that this is when we work with, with Warren. Like, you know, you have to make a business plan that they, they're going to look at this and say something. And they uh, Warren do the business plan, do the path for us. And we had to ensure that we follow the business plan and that the numbers work. So we also are going to check the intellectual property. Very important, you know, when you had new idea, you have to make sure you protect it. And the business grant, as um, um, we were saying before, is uh, the government wants you to invest in certain areas of Australia. And the government is very generous. If you create employment, if you bring a uh, it helps Australia with your business. There is many grants available. So I'm going to check those grants and see how can we get some extra cash flow to help our starting business. Uh, same with contact from zero, so we have to do registration, licenses, make sure that we have all that up to date. And then we work with a Grayan with the capital because we don't have money, so Grayan is going to help us get the capital, do the cash flow projection for investors, and do the follow up with the numbers. So that's the way how we fit in this team, and that's how we can help you guys in your project. And that's the, the two options, but it, it's very important that when you decide to go through this path, you get uh, ensured that your business structures are uh, set up properly, uh, your registrations, you protect your assets, your insurance, you have to make sure your business are protected, public liabilities, recovery insurance, business insurance, that you compliance with the government licenses and requirements. So this is how an accountant is going to help you in this process. And obviously tonight we are a panel of experts and this is like a little puzzle. Everything has to fit because you have to get everything right. And Australia is an amazing country to invest and is very welcoming anyone who has innovation that is entrepreneurial had idea. So to all the attendees, it's, it's a great opportunity if, if you know you have uh, in mind. And um, yes, yeah, so that's how we can help you. And obviously, if you need our help, you will have our details at the end of the presentation. Well, 
Thank you so much, Charitza. No worries, the, next, the next speaker is Javier Guillén, Business Development Manager from Inside Academy, who will talk about entrepreneurship and innovation. Good evening, Javier. Good evening. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you, Nicolas, and thank you for everyone and you know for Project Arch and for having us today. Uh, we were talking about business plan, investment, visa, and accounting. So let's talk a little bit about the driver, you know, the mindset and the skills that you know every entrepreneur needs to success. So, um, friends, the, the world is changing so fast in this, and but also the way. Uh, we see the meaning of a professional career. Uh, concepts as a world, retirement, and lifestyle have been redefined. Globalization, technology, or networking, and to work as a community are some of the ways that millions of people are using to get inspired, thinking out of the box, and realize that they can start their own business. To do that, we need an idea, resources, skills, and the knowledge. All the factors related to training clearly so nowadays the educational system is still so traditional focus on the books on just provide titles and qualifications rather than focus on those real values we all need to success in the real market world. Well, as you say, my name is Javier Guillén, business development manager at uh, the Inside Academy of Entrepreneur and Innovation. We are located in Melbourne and where we believe that a business is a solution for a problem. Mm. Let me fix the perfect. During the almost three years, Inside Academy has been providing training programs to international and domestic students that either are entrepreneurs that want to learn how to develop their own project and idea, as well as those looking for understanding the fundamental pillars of the different business model. Our commitment definitely is to make sure that all of them achieve a solid entrepreneur mindset and success in the professional path. We do it applying for a proactive and disruptive methodology of training with with a solid belief in collaboration and work as a community we we'll focus on uh, your learning your learning journey on five milestones the coaching and mentoring system because rather than theory we focus on practice we implement a 25 percent theory and 75 practice methodology making sure that the perfect understanding and the application of the theory the training programs are delivered by experts, not just by the topic, but also with a long working experience in the subjects they are training. Our coaches are experimenting active business people that share their knowledge and experience with our students while providing a full mentoring service. Also, the incubators, which are free weekly one-to-one -one seasons with our coaches. Individual consulting service to discuss, improve, and develop any aspect you need for your own project, for your professional skills or your professional career. The initiative and, and idea. Many of our students, of course, are coming with their own idea, with their own project, but it's not needed. So as an entrepreneur, it's normal that you have a multi, uh, multiple number of ideas in your mind that you want to develop. But the Inside Academy is a place to be inspired, but also to select which is the project suits better for you. We are using real cases studies as a startup and real companies as a case study. So we also support with master classes, allocating international speakers from a wide variety of industries and regions to share their knowledge, experience, and advice. And also, we are providing free workshops and seminars, as well as boot camps for those students are looking for a continuous improvement. Topics as uh, e-commerce, digital marketing, personal branding, resilience, and, and so are included in these boot camps. For us, one of the main assets for any entrepreneur it is the networking i will say that maybe the 25 percent of our time and the effort is invested in networking it's really important to be well connected mainly when you are coming from foreign countries the benefits of this has been noticed in our all students we are closely collaborating with governmental institutions in victoria and other relevant corporations or training programs well um we are focused or we are experts in something. We are experts in business, but we go so beyond the definition of business. Uh, we are covering from the major and fundamental skills that any entrepreneur needs, covering the mind, self, self discovery, and emotional intelligence, and, and networking or collaboration, up to create a presentation for investors, a business plan, and, and marketing plans. 
Uh, the three different levels are reinforced with the additional activities mentioned before, and they are covering three levels. The I skills or certificate four with training the 12 more important skills that any entrepreneur needs as a personal branding, public speaking, time management and research, for instance. The I star or diploma of business, the perfect journey to learn how to develop and run a, a project. We are covering, as I mentioned, self-discovery and emotional intelligence or design thinking, business model canvas, business innovation and marketing, for instance. And the I grow or advanced diploma in business, with, uh, in, which include the five, the five elements or major subjects to manage to drive a business, project integration, change management, or digital marketing, business plan, and so. We cover, as I said, basically we are covering the full training for the fundamental skills uh, some basic skills that need any entrepreneur to the business plan, marketing plan, or the presentation while looking for investors. In summary, if you are thinking to start your own business, Inside Academy is a player where you learn the most fundamental premises trained by experts and active professionals while studying using real companies. Um, so basically, bring your initiative, build yourself up, uh, grow your network, sharpen your skills, grow and build your project and graduate with full preparation. Just be ready to success. Thank you very much for listening and your attention. Uh, if you want more information, more than happy, visit your websites and social media channels and contact us if you want to enjoy for a free campus tour and receive information in details. Thank you very much and congratulations for today. Thank you, Javier. Thank you very much, Sarah, today. And I welcome Graham Kinder, CEO of Rebuild Gold Capital, who will tell us how to turn your idea into a successful innovation project about venture capital funds, an opportunity for business, and will deliver our closing comments. Good evening, Graham. Nicholas, good evening. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Um, it's a great privilege to be with you this evening. I'd like to cover a number of key areas for you this evening, particularly focusing on the areas of investment uh, and the investment in your business. But to background that, Australia is a really welcoming place for business. We've already heard that a little bit, but Australia has an international reputation for innovation. It starts all the way back with our first Australians, our Indigenous community, inventing the boomerang. But more recently, we have uh, Google Maps, the uh, black box flight recorders, as you'll see in there, the application of uh, medicinal penicillin, all the way through to plastic wine racks, uh, baby safe capsules. Australia as a nation has welcomed innovation, welcomed entrepreneurship since its very establishment, and it has not changed in all of the all of the subsequent years. We look forward to working with you to try and help you build a successful business as well. Australia, our government, our state government, uh, and certainly the team of professionals you've worked with this evening are all here to help you. We want to turn your ideas into a successful innovation project. If you can create whether you're buying an existing business and put an innovation overlay over the top of it. There are a number of factors in there that we've just listed that will help you to succeed. Obviously, you need to be prepared to take a risk and come and move and stay here in Australia. But can I take your attention to item number seven on that list? Be prepared to seek the advice of experts. Take the opportunity to work with the panel that we've put together for you here this evening because they really do have the skill, the knowledge, the background information to help you succeed. You're not in this journey alone. You can do it with the team and make sure that we get a great success outcome for you. There are other elements that we think are also important for you guys to focus on before we look at success. And here, obviously, we want you to focus on, I think in this today's world, to focus on technology, to focus on building your own personal skills. And we've learned this evening uh, that we have on our panel, the Inside Academy, who can help you with your personal and professional development. Last on the list is resilience. Building a business is tough. 
Australia is a tough land. It's a land of, as we've seen, fires and floods and business extremes from boom times to periods like the COVID environment that we're in. You need to be resilient and be able to work within that environment. But if you are, you can build a really great e enterprise here in Australia. But there are some things, and we've discussed them earlier, when you're building a business, you do need to build it to comply with our state and federal government requirements. And listed here to just reinforce some of the things that are said earlier, if you build your business and your business plan focusing on these things, you will have a great opportunity to, to succeed. Underpinning success, however, is the need for money. Money comes in because you're going to make an investment. You can borrow the money from friends, family, at an early stage in business, it's hard to borrow from banks and finance companies. They tend to be sources of money later down the track. The other way to get money, of course, is to raise money through equity, to sell shares in the business. But again, in an early stage or a new business acquisition, it's not easy to use the traditional investment bankers and brokers. So we point you towards the area we call venture capital. Venture capital investors are a group of people who understand risk and they understand the problems of uh, early stage investment. But if you invest with an early stage venture capital fund or you ask their support for your business, there are many advantages that they can deliver in terms of taxation benefits, access to government grants, as was mentioned earlier. We really do believe that uh, state and federal governments in particular are delighted to support you if your innovation idea is backed by an Australian venture capital fund. Let's help you match one of the funds um, that, we, that we have available here in Australia. I'll just go back a step here before we hit a question and answer section. What I did want to say is Australia offers a great opportunity for you. It was mentioned earlier that we have grants available, we have an, a business environment that is strong and stable, we have taxation advantages that are going to help you to achieve even better funding for your business. For example, an a early stage venture capital limited partnership fund, there is no capital gains tax for the investor, making it extremely attractive for them to back you. But most importantly, Australia is a nation of innovation. We want you to come and develop your ideas here. So this evening, we've looked at whether you have a business idea that you want to develop. Our team, our one-stop shop, can help you find the funding and develop that idea. If you do not have an idea, then we have businesses that are already available and you can work with companies like Link to help you find a business that's ideally suited to your need. Through RC Australia, all of the visa requirements are going to be very carefully and diligently managed to give you the best opportunity. The business plan company will help you document all of that. YNS Accounting are going to make sure that your business is structured well for long term success. We believe we're offering you a one stop shop, a total solution that can match everybody's needs from you have a great idea or you need us to help you find one, we're here as a team to give you those solutions and answers. Nicholas, we would welcome innovation. We would welcome now any questions that people have of us, yes? Well, thank you, Graham. And, and I got a question for you right now that people are discussing and asking uh, through the presentation and is, how can I get the money to invest in my idea? And do I need first the idea and the business plan or should I first try to found the money? Nicholas, um, that's a great question. In short, it's good to have some money to commit to your business. Whether you're looking for venture capital, whether you're looking to borrow funds from friends and family, it's good to have something that evidences that you have got a personal commitment to your business and your business plan. But beyond that, the business that you may wish to uh, move into may require substantially more capital. And that's where 
our team this evening can help you by looking and talking to venture capital funds. If you've got a great idea, we can help you find the money that's needed to grow that business. Okay, great. And how about if my family, perhaps, borrow me that money? Um, do I need to uh, keep that money for a year or do you just need to keep that money while I'm starting this idea of business? How long do I need to keep the money I, I borrow? Uh, again, there's many, I guess we can answer that from several directions. Money that you are borrowing does eventually need to be repaid. So it's important that you, you work with uh, companies like YNS to come up with a expenditure, a cash flow was mentioned, uh, Yuritsa mentioned earlier, so that we can see how to expend the money that you borrow carefully and prudently over a sufficient time for your business to create revenue that will then allow you to repay the loan. So again, by working with experts like YNS Accounting and like Projects RH, we can actually help you manage that cash flow so that you can repay your loan and make sure that your business succeeds. Thank you. Uh, there is another question, and Derek, I'm pretty sure you can help us. Um, there is this person who is in a studying visa, and he got all the money from overseas. What happened with taxation? How do I report that money? Do I need to report it for the NAVN, or what is that process? Okay, so what happened is, um they will have what we call a temporary visa when we are students. So if, say, we get money from our parents or someone lends us money from overseas, um, we don't have the obligation to report what we call money earned over overseas when we are in temporary visa. This only happens when you become resident or citizen, that then you will have to report your income from not only Australia, but also overseas. So we, we heard uh, the question that she has in a student visa, that money that is going to come to her is not taxable in Australia. Okay, and well, Richard, there is a question uh, for you, which is how, oh, which business or what business do I need to buy? How, how do I know that is the perfect time to buy a business, especially in this uh, a strange crisis, um, how if I need to, and I think it's great to buy a cafe, and that cafe will be the business. Uh, how do I know? Because the business could be there, and I could think, oh, that's a great idea, but maybe it's not. How is your advice for Yeah, that? look, very good point. You, you really need to sit down and and think about where you want to go, what your objectives are, what sort of funds can you raise. And, and ideally, you'd want to go into a business where there's something you can contribute. You know, hopefully, you've got some experience in that area, something you can build upon, some ideas about that industry. You'll, you'll never get a perfect match, but you, you, you've got a plan, you've got to think through what you want to do, you've got to look at your finances, particularly with a, an accountant, for instance. You've got to work with other experts to plan your approach and how to move forward um, before going into a purchase. So it's, it's a lot about planning, a lot about thinking yourself, where do you want to go? What are my objectives? <clears throat> what do I need to get to? I, I guess the second part of it is yes. also about which industry sector should you go in uh, nowadays? And it's, it's very difficult. Anybody buying a business nowadays has got to take a little bit of a leap of faith. Um, however, business prices are adjusted accordingly. You could buy some businesses now at a lot lower cost than you could have done six months ago. Um, but there is a leap of faith. How will, that in, how will that business go forward? How will that industry sector uh, go forward? And how will it recover? Or how will it excel over the coming months? Again, research talking to industry experts, talking to other people in that industry sector, that all goes into the, the makeup of deciding what sort of business uh, you might want to go for. 
very happy to talk to anybody about that and have a chat about what we're seeing in the marketplace. We talk to a lot of business people. We get a lot of feedback. We get a lot of feel for, for where businesses are going. So happy to chat with anybody who wants some uh, more in-depth discussion on that. What do you think is the best area and the, the best area to, to, that, to buy that business? Do you think it's a great opportunity to buy a business in the hospitality sector or now with Australia's policies uh, in terms of security and web security is changing? Is the best plan to get or buy a business uh, like in the security center? Or, what, what in your expertise, or is the best <clears throat> area? to invest I, right now? I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say any one particular area is the best area. It depends on who's buying the business and what skills they've got, what background they've got, and what they could do with that business. Uh, I think that's a more in, important factor than any particular industry sectors. Industry sectors are always going to be a bit unpredictable. It's, it's really hard to tell um, which ones, where they're going to go over the next two, three, ten years. Uh, I think it's more important to have a good plan and more important for the person who's buying the business to say, yes, I can run this business. Yes, I can improve this business rather than picking on a particular industry sector. Well, thank you. Now, another question, and therefore it's is for Graham. Um, and this question, uh, and there is a topic that we've been discussing and is in terms of the process. Uh, so there is this person who already got a business and he got this business plan and he thinks that it could work but it's not the money it's a, it's a problem there with a the founding what is all these documents i need to get ready before to call you so the process of founding will be easier uh thank you nicholas so <clears throat> i guess we would ask um if I may suggest, we're keen to engage with people fairly early in the in the process. What we're keen to do is to have an initial discussion and learn what it is, what that idea is, what that business objective is, and how much thinking they've already put into uh, their business plan preparation. We may, in fact, help somebody save a lot of unnecessary work. Some people can invest literally hundreds of hours of trying to build a business plan that they think reflects their business idea, whereas we may well be able to introduce them to uh, Warren at the business plan company and help them save literally hundreds of hours and come up with a far more professional and most importantly, a, a business plan that is targeted to meet the needs of the state uh, and the federal government requirements. Uh, as was noted earlier, Uh, we need to tailor a business plan along those lines. So at what stage should people approach us? As soon as they're keen to make the commitment to come to Australia. Let's engage in the discussion and we can help direct uh, their thinking from there. Introduce them to people like Richard if they want to buy a business. Introduce them to people like Paul Raftery if they're looking to create a new project, find a new project to get involved in. Projects RH is ideally suited to come up with some of the creative, innovative projects. Well, thank you. And finally, what is the minimum of, uh, of amount of money or funding that I, that I need to have? Okay. Look, again, it depends on the type of business that you wish to enter into. But as Juan uh, Rincon from RC Australia mentioned earlier, uh, one of the visas is, in fact, uh, allowing a person to start one, I believe, at $200,000 as an in initial investment. And my understanding of that, uh, only 10% of that is required to actually be invested in the first year. You need to be able to show you have it but uh, the amount of capital commitment in the first year can be even less. One, perhaps you'd like to comment on that as well. Yes, Graham. In the 188 visa, the, the 200,000 visa, you put the money in the fund, the, the, the $200,000, and the, this money is committed to the business. And you withdraw from the fund the money as the money requires. 
but in terms of minimum is 10% within the first year. But if you look, if you like to withdraw the money faster, also you can. That is, that is, that is up to you. It's up to the business plan. It's up to the business need to use the $200,000 faster or slower. But most to be at minimum 10% in the first year. Well, tonight, perhaps a great opportunity and probably some participants are actually creating an idea. And they say, well, I got an idea, but I need uh, partners. I need people who believe in my idea. And this is a question for Juan. How many partners can actually go into the visa process? Let's say that tonight there is some links and few of our attendees say, okay, let's go together for this project. How, okay. what is the limit? One, two, three, or there is not limited? Okay, it depends. It, it, please bear in, my, bear in mind that we have 12 different visas. If we are talking about the uh, 188E, which is the 200,000 visa, the same activity could be the channel for three partners because the minimum is to have at least 30% of the ownership of the, of the business. So if you have 30% of a business, let's say, of $200,000, you have $70,000 and two partners, you are entitled to the visa as well as your other two partners. So with one uh, entrepreneurial idea, you can get three partners getting the visa. In this visa, in other visas, you must be the sole and unique owner. For instance, in the Queensland existing business that you have to buy the business, they must to be one sole partner, including the, the family unit. I mean, a, a partner, husband and wife, who must to be the sole owner. But okay. yeah, it depends, but it depends. Okay, great. So just, just to clarify a little bit with the first idea, uh, with the three partners, because we need to, they need to have a, a specific percent of the company. Uh, it doesn't mean that probably three families can apply. Yes. Because the visa will be for the, for the person who got actually the percentage of the company plus its family. Her entire family, entire family, partner well, family and, children up, <laughs> and children up to 23 years old. Okay. Okay, great. But that will, so we need to be quite careful because there is hundreds of visas and in specific, you were listing a few different visas and what is my option? If one of the attendees were asking before, well, where is my visa? How I know? Because uh, probably uh, that, that person got, is, is working now and the, the owner of the company wanted to sponsor him, uh, but yeah. also that person got, got an idea. Do I need to take the risk and create my business or should it be better to go for the sponsor opportunity? Okay, I think this is a question that, uh, as Warren said, each case is each case. Not every business is for everybody. Not every visa is for everybody. The idea of us as a migration advisor is to explain to you all the pros and cons of every single visa so you can choose the more appropriate for your personal circumstances. They are people who have ideas, but they don't have money. They are people who have money, but they don't have ideas. And they have little money and big ideas. They have only skills and like to start up with his own skills. So they are many options, many options. So that's why when we put together the, the project, uh, as, as Graham said, we are a one-stop shop. But the door of the shop is the migration advice. From there, we move to the to to project RH, and we talk with Paul, and we we 
put together the, the idea, go to the to the business, uh, to the business plan, goes to the accounting side with Joritza, go to the to, to warrant it the case to buy a business and then to get the money with, with Graham. So and if you need some uh, some advice some preparation, he's inside academy doing his part. So the idea is from one door to move in several pathways because they are several now we cannot have one receipt for everybody well thank you so much and everyone if you have any questions please you are welcome to ask it you can call us and send us an email at the very end you will receive the presentation of the video and it will be great to hear you because there is few other questions that they might take more time because as everyone been saying there is a specific and every single business is a completely different case thank you so much juan to answer our question and graham please thank you i would like to just uh, offer a few final comments for everybody and importantly as we've discussed tonight, and I hope you fully you've seen, there's many different pathways to permanent residency in Australia. We believe that one of the really great ways is to take advantage of the business visa range or the sponsor range. And one absolutely correctly says the, the door to these pathways starts with talking to RC Australia, your immigration agents, to to help you try and identify which direction you can go. But importantly, if you've got a little bit of savings and you want to run your own business, we can help you buy a business, we can help you build a business, we can create a business opportunity for you. So we can certainly assist you if you have a little bit of money. If you've got a great idea, but not a lot of money, then our job is to help match the investors for your great idea. As I said, Australia is a nation that supports innovation. Our team of professionals can really help you find that total solution. So I am keen for everybody to leave us by, by understanding this country, Australia, is a really exciting place to live and work this particular period that we've seen of COVID has still seen the opportunity for children to receive education. Universities are reopening. Stay and share this brilliant country with us. Australia is going to offer you a very safe environment compared with many places in the world. Our economy is strong. It's stable. By world standards, this COVID uh, pandemic has affected Australia far less than most other nations on earth. This is a genuine liberal democracy. It's a place that is a phenomenal climate to build a business. We'd really love to help you. As I say, Australia is open for business. Reduce your business risk, reduce your stress. Come and enjoy Australia, whether you want to live in sunny Queensland, whether you would like to be down in our national capital and skipping off to the snow fields this weekend, whether you're down in Melbourne, OK, at the moment you're probably in lockdown, but what a brilliant city in any other... South Australia, what a lovely, you know, our city of churches over in Perth. Folks, Australia is a brilliant place to be. For how you stay here, it's just making one phone call. There are phone numbers there on the screen for you now to Projects RH or send them an email, info at projectsrh.com.au and through there we can identify how to get that door open, introduce you back to Juan down at RC Capital and all of the other people that are involved in the team. It's a simple solution, but the time to act is now. Now there are brilliant opportunities before uh, the nation starts to wake up again post-COVID. Get your project plans underway. Now is a brilliant opportunity to do that. As uh, was mentioned earlier, some great business buying opportunities, some great investment opportunities. Brilliant time to start getting some government grants. Um, there are some grants out there for every $1 you invest, our Australian government will match it dollar for dollar. You put up $200,000, you can actually get a $400,000 investment to get your business going. The time to act is now. 
We welcome your inquiries and we thank you very, very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your attendance tonight. But Nicholas, I'll leave the closing comment to you. Well, thank you so much, Rahm. And thank you, everyone. Is In this time of crisis, it's time to, well, go for the further step. I'm really grateful to be here with seven fantastic companies across Australia who are actually, as a team, we will help all of you to go to take that next step. Welcome all the inquiries and thank you so much for your valuable time tonight. Everyone, have a lovely night. Please take care and I'm pretty sure with a great idea, we will going to continue to improve and get excellent opportunities as a business opportunities of, of course, life opportunities. Thank you so much, everyone.